All right, what are we uh, what are we looking for here? I don't know. I found some stuff that I hadn't seen in a really long time. Do you have a? <gasps> oh, good. You have a flashlight. That that helps. Oh my God, what is all this stuff? Yeah, it was in a bin inside our basement. I haven't seen this stuff in years. Why do we have two little nightmares? That doesn't make sense. Oh my God, what the hell is that? What is that? Oh, look, we have some games over here. What games are these? Maybe we'll use that for our Halloween special. Let's do it. Hello, and welcome to our Halloween special. Our very first one. We've never done anything like this, but we're pretty excited. I was thinking we start at the very beginning of our Halloween games we played together. Do oh. you recognize this one? I do. I think, I think these games are a lot of people's favorites. They definitely say Halloween. And there's <laughs> way too much candy. I don't. I can't even see the game. Wait, it's in here somewhere. Here we go. And that's the only one that got a physical, right? Yeah. Costume Quest 2 is the only one that actually got a physical. The physical was done by Limited Run. And I wish they had done Costume Quest, the first one. Mm -hmm. We would definitely get that one, too. But I, think, I think the first Costume Quest, was that a Xbox Live Arcade game, right? That was um, yeah, uh, for Xbox, I think. I think it was, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why don't we start talking about the first one, then, since we have all this candy now everywhere mm -hmm. and this awesome loot bag like where did we get the bag actually let's oh, yeah. talk about the bag first this bag um i got this at pax i don't even know what year but i guess the year that this game probably came out mm -hmm. and um i was pretty excited about it and it was uh, i got it even way before our son was born and so it was really kind of funny because uh it became his traditional halloween bag that he used every single year yeah yes. that's awesome yeah mm -hmm. and then so they were just handing this bag out just randomly yeah mm -hmm. oh cool yeah no i think it was like a lineup i'm sure you had to line up and get something and uh but for it but um yeah this was like a free pax kind of uh, special thing and for people who don't know what pax is it's the penny arcade expo it's a convention a game convention it's been going on for i don't know 20 years now i think right? yeah mm -hmm. and uh they have them in seattle where it started first boston austin australia now australia as well yeah they've had for quite a while yeah and there was another location they were going to open up to, but I can't remember. Philadelphia? I yeah, I want to say Philadelphia okay. just got one recently. And um, actually, I met Tim Schaefer twice um, at PAX. <laughs> That's but cool. both times were an accident. And Tim Schaefer is who's kind of the, what do you call him? The creative director of this of Yeah, I guess games. the head of the studio. Yeah, He's the head of the studios. But yeah, it was really kind of funny. And so I don't know. He may have actually just handed me this bag because I just ran into him randomly. So mm -hmm. it was for this game one year and then Grim Fandango another year. Yeah, that's, I mean, two great games, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's a, that's an awesome story. So uh, Costume Quest won, though. So we, yes. that's a tradition now. Like we play mm -hmm. it every year. Yep. And then I think the greatest part was when they re-released it. What was it for, like, Xbox One? Um, Not the first one. The second one, I think, yeah. So the first one never even got re-released on... No, it's backwards compatible. But, yeah, it's it's just an arcade game and no physical, as we said earlier. So that's a little bit sad, but... Oh, that is sad. So at least, I guess, I got to watch you get all the achievements and I got to get all the achievements. So I felt like I got to play it twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's I, I think it's a great game. And I typically don't play turn-based uh, combat you know that's basically what it is so I, I yeah like i said i don't play those types of games but this one's so much fun like it's you yeah. know as you can you can probably tell a better story than me about well the game, i think but. that it is you know obviously they're going for that rpg feel but like you're saying with the turn-based combat but it's definitely more simplified rpg and i think that's like one of the greatest parts about this game is like it feels like anybody can play this game and then you have all the different costumes that you're collecting in them obviously costume quest and so i think that's like 
instead of you're really like tweaking your stats or something like that, like in a traditional RPG, you have costumes that have different moves mm -hmm. and each of your party members get to wear a costume of your choice. So you kind of get to switch up your party in a sense. So, I mean, it's a super fun game. I, I love them because I can't think of a game that is more Halloween. It is the ultimate Halloween game. And then as, as we learned from the Double Fine documentary, right, which, you know, definitely recommend checking that one out if you guys haven't. But uh, this was a game jam, right, that yeah. someone had made during that two or three week uh, thing that they do. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to make a full game out of it. So, yeah, and yeah I'm I think that was pretty so cool. glad they did. And I mean, and then I think that when costume quest 2 came out are we ready to talk about costume quest yeah two? let's you know if there's nothing else i mean <laughs> you mentioned that it's costume quest is a type of game that you know it's very simplified turn-based yeah. combat and it's like perfect for me because i <laughs> i need simplified uh turn-based combat because i don't i don't know a lot of moves and if it's just kind of complicated I, menus you're out yeah <laughs> it's like two turn-based combat games that i play it's like costume quest and then south park that's like <laughs> that's my oh, jam i think those are great and i mm. think the cool part about Costume Quest 2 is they really just took the same formula and they just made another story, made another game with it, um, new costume. I think they made the battle system a little bit better as well. Um, in the first game, it's a little bit unpredictable with what button you're going to use for blocking or um, that extra like awesome attack that you get. But in Costume Quest 2, they kind of made it this like set button thing. Um, where it's like each character just has their set button. So I made it a little bit more just like, hey, you just got to get the timing right. It's not like getting the timing right and getting the button right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, uh, but Costume Quest 2 had probably one of the most difficult achievements, as you might remember. Oh, Candy Corn? Candy Corn. <laughs> you have to have Candy Corn as one of your party members, right? Yeah. And it was really funny because I remember when I played as, when I'm going for that achievement, I always think, oh my god, I'm gonna get so sick and tired of playing this candy corn. You have this useless party member the entire game. But they made it so that the candy corn is always saying something pretty funny. I don't know. They gave him like 40 something lines, I feel. <laughs> oh, way more probably. I can't remember. Was it like cheesy dad jokes or like? Yeah, I pretty remember. much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they have these just like cheesy jokes that they make about the dang candy corn for the entire game. And it just. I found myself kind of looking forward to knowing, like, what's he going to say this time? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a highlight, but yeah, it makes it, if you are just playing through it oh my God. for that completion or that, that achievement, then yeah, that you are basically down one party member the You're entire game. You're down one party member. And for some reason, I don't know, even in the clip that you'll see here, like, they love attacking him. The enemies go for that <laughs> damn target. candy corn. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. over and over again. So something about him being the candy corn makes him a target. And I don't know I mean, if it was intentional. <laughs> I mean, it's just candy corn is one of those things where it's, it screams Halloween, but yeah. it's probably the worst candy ever. Right? I'm, I completely agree. <laughs> I'm like, sure there's other... It never <laughs> expires. It never molds. Like there's, it's just indestructible, I feel. It's like yeah. carnauba wax and sugar and food coloring. Yeah. So, but I it mean, is Halloween. I know there's people out there that probably love them. Matter of fact, I have some Scottish relatives that absolutely love the candy corn because they can't get it over there. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a strange one, but... I mean, yeah, for us, this is like the ultimate, yeah. you know, set of games that we play every year. And like, mm -hmm. you know, we've completed all of them at this point, yep. both of us, but we still boot them up and just play them for nostalgia at this it's point, in a sense. become a tradition. And every single year, I am waiting for Double Fine to say Costume Quest 3. I mean... Yeah, they haven't made a game in since Psychonauts 2, so I don't know what they're working on. But they hopefully, better be Costume Quest. I mean, I hope so. I mean, maybe we'll just get a. It, it drops like Game Pass on you know Halloween. That would be funny. That would be amazing. Or it's gonna, they're going to throw a curveball at us. It'll be like Christmas Quest. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, it's it's like you said. It's so fun with the costumes and the dialogue is funny too. And you go door Great to door, dialogue. right? And just yep. um, you yeah. literally are trick or treating. That's yeah. how you run into your enemy. You are uh, you're you have that chance with every single door that you knock on that you're either going to run into a, a human and they're going to give you candy or you're going to run into a monster and you have to fight. And so you just have that like 
Yeah. This like random it, element, right? Yeah, and it, it has us a bit of a anticipation feeling where I know there's times when I'm like, oh my God, I've had like three battles in a row. Please, please, please be a human that just gives me candy, you know? And mm -hmm. then it's like, it's another monster. And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, so very RNG, but it's not like to a point where you get uh, frustrated with it, right? No, uh, that's the thing I love about both Costume Quest 1 and 2. I just, I never felt fatigued from them. I just feel like they're a great pace. It's never too many battles. Like you said, it's more simple. It's not too difficult. Um, it's completely great Halloween trick-or-treating game with funny dialogue. I can't say enough good things about yep. Costume Quest. That's why it's it's the first one we're talking about. It's the first ones that we really started playing together. It's like our tradition, and it's here in our list. Totally agree. Just too bad it's only one physical copy mm -hmm. available on PS4 because... Um, nothing on xbox but it's good to have this one because you know it, it's good memories and good to have in the collection yep absolutely so which game do you want to talk about next i have something in mind because this series is about to get its third entry so i figured this would be a good segue into this one. Ooh, exciting I mean, it's uh, one of my favorite uh, indie game series, I would say. You know, you can, you know, like I said, it's about to be a trilogy. But why don't we look at some of the collectibles we have first, and then we can talk about the games. Okay, sounds yeah. good. So, yeah, I guess we can take a look at this first. This is obviously very recognizable, I think. This is Six from Little Nightmares. And funny story with this one is that this is a loose figure that I got from eBay. And I was very excited because it was hard to find this one for some reason uh, at the time. Didn't come with the game and just had the poster, I think, and the box, which I, since I recycled it, I don't know why, but yeah, <laughs> I guess lack of room. But this one's pretty cool. And then we went to Canada, went to EB Games, uh, and then we came across this one just sitting at the front, uh, the cashier. And it was like, I don't know, 60 Canadian dollars, which is way less than US dollars, and complete sealed. And so we have two of that figure now. That's how we uh, <laughs> that's how we have two. But I mean, I, I'm very excited to have like a complete one sealed, basically. Obviously, I opened it up to take the game out of this one, which we can also show here next. But yeah, this one comes with a poster and a bunch of stuff and has a cool little you know, like kind of uh, this door right here, right? You can see her through. And then here's the game, which is, I think most people have probably seen the complete edition. This one is very hard to find. This one is on the rarer side for sure. So I like doubled up on like the uh, plastic sleeve here apparently. So <laughs> I just didn't want anything to happen to it. Like, you know, we, we collect seal games too, but obviously we are collectors. We don't resell any of this stuff. So just want to have it in as pristine of a condition as possible yeah so if this this standard edition only came with this um collector's edition i believe i remember i thought we were hallucinating when we saw this little nightmares um set like collector's edition at eb games because it was years after the game had been out mm -hmm. obviously and it was just sitting there and the, it was in the weirdest spot too like wasn't it just on the counter or something it was like on the that? counter you're on the front so because I the guy like, yeah the guy, <laughs> the guy working there said that yeah they sent this to to us from the warehouse or something like that and so like yeah we'll just put it on sale up front so i'm like all right i'll take it and coincidentally you know um playing it on xbox one that's what i played it on so i was like this is even better so yeah, yeah there you amazing. go amazing a great find for sure yeah. so now we have two so we can just display the uh the extra yeah. one somewhere display her yep. and then we keep this one in pristine condition yep exactly <laughs> and so with little nightmares did you play this one when it first came out like, um, did no. you know about it when it first came out? I did, and I was very excited. I saw trailers for it, and, you know, it was... I think the original title of this was, like, Hunger, I think it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because as you know from the from the game, <laughs> she holds her stomach, gets hungry, and has to eat various things, you know? Uh -huh, so That's right. Um, so I think that's uh, one of those things you have to deal with in the game, you know, other than being a platformer primarily. It has that horror feel for sure i mean it is a horror platformer which there aren't that many of those but um i think i guess it's more similar to something like limbo right and uh you also have um 
stealth, a little bit of stealth in this game too. You have to sneak past enemies and wouldn't call it a stealth game though, but really good game, very creepy and very great atmosphere in this one too. So that's where I didn't play it at launch. I played it much later. This is how this became a Halloween game because I played it, I completed it, but I started this back in like 2017 maybe. So it took me like five years to go back to it. And it's not because it wasn't good. It's just one of those things that happen. You know, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to it. Starting a game and then you're like, okay, I couldn't quite get into it. But then once I sat down a couple of years ago, then it became one of my favorite indie games. Yeah. Wasn't there a really difficult achievement with this one, like a no death run? Because I remember watching you play this game a couple of Halloweens ago. That was when I completed that because I think I only had that left. So it has DLC that offers a uh, side story, a different character. And then you, uh, you have to do, yeah, the no death run in under an hour. So oh it's pretty, gosh. pretty tough. Uh, but, you know, it's like if you learn the game, obviously you just have to practice. But yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, it's pretty tough because the controls are a little bit iffy. I will say like it's a little bit tough. Uh, the 2.5D perspective, right? Because when you're running on planks, you're running on, you know, jumping on swinging chandeliers and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's. It, it takes practice, yeah. But, I mean, once you get the hang of this game, uh, it, it's so much fun. And uh, I was going to say it's very manual controls. So you have to hold down, like, the right trigger to hold on to stairs. Uh, hold on to stairs. Hold on to ladders and, and ledges and stuff. I remember yep. you mastering the first part of this game, and you had the timing down on it. But when you got to, I think, the part where it's, like, those hanging cages, basically. Yeah. And I think, yeah, and then you're running on this little plank and having to get the jump right and to get onto the cages and hang on. And like, I remember you telling me that, like these controls are so manual, like this is mm -hmm. so tough to get perfect and then do it at a really great time as well. I think like I was holding the timer for you while you were doing that achievement. So mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you, <laughs> can't, you can't use your lighter as you're hanging onto things, right? You can only flick your lighter on when, uh, when you're walking or, so, yeah, uh, but there's a lot of dangers, obviously, a lot of ways to die and very easy to die. Yeah, but yeah. but really good. So, but uh, yeah, I definitely recommend if you haven't played this. Yeah, this is a f really great game to play around Halloween. And I just noticed real quick, too, it's not a collector's edition. It's six edition, which I think is really cute. <laughs> yeah, well, that's her, I guess. That's so. her. So what a cute name. Yeah, cool. All right. So let's move on to the sequel, Little Nightmares 2. And I'll give you this because you got me uh, this as a gift. That's really cool. Yeah, I was so excited when I saw Bandai Namco open up pre-orders for this. I knew that I had to get it for you. I'll put the TV box over here so you can put this guy. So that's uh, it's taken. It's a scene from the game. So where you play as Mono, which is the boy with the bag over his head, and <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> pulling six out of the TV, but uh, yeah, this one uh, was, it sort of felt like a co-op ga co game, but it wasn't a co-op game, uh, but we can get to that, but let's show actually the uh, Steelbook, which Yeah, this came, came inside this, yeah. the box there too, and this is probably not just the figure that made me really want to get this collector's edition, but when I saw that this game had a Steelbook, that like made that, you know, we collect Steelbooks, so cannot seem to get the spine on this one but um such a cool steelbook more artsy than mm -hmm. it is just like hey game art you know it's just really like a more artsy looking yeah. steelbook so. you can actually uh, you can open it too oh, okay yeah. so it came with a soundtrack in here so oh, cool. it didn't come with the game in here the game was separate as we can you know obviously show as well but it came with that soundtrack and then i just added the game disc uh, in here so yeah soundtrack is really great as well yeah no I, I love watching you play this game. It's a great game. Let me see, should I put this right here? Yeah, sure. And then here's the original. Just game. the standard edition. Also, yeah, haven't, uh, as we, you know, we have the other one in the steelbook, so that's what I used to play it with. So, yeah, this one you got, you pre ordered this for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, by all means, this was uh, a huge improvement from the first game. Like this was just in everything with the story, the gameplay mechanics. And like I mentioned earlier, you had six as kind of like a companion. 
Um, I'm not going to spoil anything, obviously, because this one has a little bit more of a twist in a sense. I mean, the first mm -hmm. one had a twist as well. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you play as Mono in this one. And yeah, again, same type of level structure too. But I feel like they explored a little bit more in terms of the 2.5D. You can go a little bit deeper into rooms and like towards the screen. Um, and some interesting mechanics with... You know, I don't know if you remember the level I played with in the school. Mm, you know, you had those yeah, creepy kids with the... Thing? Yeah, you had like a... I think it was a hammer, yeah. Like I mean, a obviously, sledgehammer. It was a couple of years ago since I played this now. And I played it from start to finish, completed mm -hmm. it from start to finish pretty much. Yeah. Um, so it was, a, it was a slightly easier completion as well. But it was interesting uh, the way they had laid out the levels and the different you know not not villains in a sense you know but you had the different creepy I felt characters more like bosses almost at the yeah. end of some of the levels and i thought this one it to me it just felt a little bit creepier a little bit scarier like yeah. that mannequin level yeah the mannequins too i think that was in the hospital or something yeah. like that yeah so but mm -hmm. it, it felt more had better flow to it mm -hmm. uh, for me like it was just like it was going from one level to another and then you had very different levels i think there's only like five levels but they were pretty long and then you obviously traverse out in the streets as well and climb up buildings and in through windows and stuff and um and then you have to like i said utilize six to help you with puzzles and uh avoid enemies and stuff like that and yeah no i mean this one is I gave this a 10 out of 10. I think this is like one of my all-time favorites. And because it, we played it or I played it um, around Halloween a couple of years ago, like mm -hmm. right after I completed <laughs> Little Nightmares. Yeah. And then I pretty much jumped into this one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was, yeah, one of the best experiences I've had in a long time and in the last few years as well. And you can see where the trilogy is going, because like you said, this one felt like a co-op experience, but it was AI helping you. But obviously they saw there is room for like a co-op Little Nightmares. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to play that one with you because I can't play these on my own. I get too scared. I can't move in my games. But if I'm playing with you, I know that we can we can accomplish this. We can do this, yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, and there's a reason why this wasn't a co-op game. But again, mm -hmm. not going to reveal that if you haven't played the game. But you will not regret playing this game. I think this one is fabulous. Yeah, if anyone's been holding off on playing Little Nightmares 2, wait no longer go yep, play it exactly great game and here's one last look at our little nightmares collectibles and games and steel books and the whole shebang and if we're missing something <gasps> we are missing something oh we are you're right the latest yeah that's right we featured this hold on hold on yeah we featured this in a different video <laughs> no requirement to watch that video of course but yeah this is something that we actually saw in japan and we saw it at uh, Book Off in New York when we went there. And yeah, this is the Nindroid. That's so funny. I knew we were missing something. And of course, now there's like too many items in the frame. So it's going to be out of focus here. But yeah, this is a really cool Nindroid that we, uh, we've been wanting to add to our collection. And um, this one is pretty amazing. Just oh. rule number one, don't eat the gnome, eat the sausage. <laughs> Is that a tip? There we go. Now we have them all. Now we have them all. Well, we're missing a few things, but, you know, like we said with Banda Namco, not everything was available over here yeah. in North America. Europe seemed to get far better collector's edition, and yeah. they actually... <laughs> They even got like outer boxes like we didn't like yeah. it just looked like they just kind of there you go just shove it in it an envelope came in pieces sometimes yeah. it was so funny so we didn't get complete collector's editions we got the obviously the statues and everything but europe got got the whole thing so they got better treatment than us next time i need to find a way to pre-order from europe yes exactly <laughs> All right, let's move on to a very strange family favorite. And there's already some spoilers in the frame right now, but uh, where we go next, girl? <laughs> I think these little figures here are just, uh, they would be way too hard to try to set up like on call, but they come with some pretty funny little accessories. You got a blue key, a yellow key, and a shovel, and some binocular. Yeah. But I think we can also Well, just... actually, hold on yeah. a second. Like, yeah. Let me talk about the toys, oh, yeah. actually. So, yeah. yeah. So Where did you like, get these guys? Yeah, these are like McFarlane toys. And then we 
you know, I wouldn't say we collect these anymore, but we thought these were pretty cool at some point. I would say it was like right before COVID that we just decided to do uh, some toy collecting. And these were relatively cheap then. I don't know what the availability is these days for these guys, but I'm guessing Hello Neighbor is not as uh, popular as it used to be. And it's impossible to have them stand on their own because oh, yeah. he has like toothpick legs he does have little and a toothpick. hamburger body yeah, so uh <laughs> i got him <laughs> it's like but but it's it's pretty cool it's very detailed i will yeah. say like it, you probably couldn't even see it even yeah. up close but mm -hmm. very detailed and i mean it has a good aesthetic to it though there's a good character in uh in these types of games so and i think that like you said we were on this big toy collecting kick mm -hmm. during covid and so we'll move on to our funkos next <laughs> mm -hmm. So this one is a GameStop exclusive. Yep, they had a few of these, right? So he's got like what the axe and the rope on this one. And, the and next then one. Yep. our next one is a Walmart exclusive. And this one I think was like our favorite. Yeah, it has the lagoo or uh, the glue, right? <laughs> yeah, our son loved collecting the lagoo in the game. And then, I don't know, throwing it at him and just like setting up little booby traps. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> And then the last one, it's just like a cooler one from Barnes & Noble. I always think Barnes & Noble used to get the cooler yeah, uh, it was It was like Barnes & Noble and Hot Topic got the, the interesting ones, I yeah. would say. Yeah. So then you get this so cool... So that one's black and white, which is uh, pretty cool. And he has a shovel. Was that what it was? Uh, yeah, I think he's got the... Oh, a little shovel. It's hard to see, but... Shovel oh, the crow. with a crow sitting That's on right. it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can kind of see it here in this yep. picture. There we go. We forget because we don't really collect uh, Funko Pops uh, that much anymore, but we still have all the ones we collected because we were during COVID. To, <laughs> yeah, well, I was gonna before <laughs> and during, yeah, because we were collecting for games we yeah. played, and we yeah. wanted to get the the best uh, the best ones and the most detailed ones, and these were definitely. I think there might be one or two more of that uh, type of um, neighbor. Yep. I think so. And then, like, another collectible that I think we started getting because of our son again is the Hello Neighbor books. Mm -hmm. I have not read those, though, but yeah, <laughs> I guess we bought them. We bought them, and no, we, I mean, they're just like, I would say it's almost like a little bit of a backstory on, um, on the neighbor and his life before he became the neighbor, in a sense. So yep. uh, I was kind of. They're kind of cool. I mean, um, yeah, they're, you know, good little collectibles. Again, I like having things for, I don't know, anything that's just like video game related in a sense, I think is fun. It's good. It has it has big font and pictures, so I, I can, I can read is, this. I do think it's for more for like teens or young adults. Young yeah. adults or some pictures than them and stuff. It's pretty cool. You know, I mean, they're neat little books with a... Uh, Actually, yeah. let's put them over here to yeah. uh, make some room for the games here. Wait, we Just, have games too? I mean, that's what it's all about. That's what our channel is about, collecting and playing games. So <laughs> I guess we should do some games. But All right. Well, first up. Let's start with the original. Yeah. Hello, Neighbor. We have it for Xbox One. We actually all of them for uh, Xbox One. Um yeah, I mean, this is, like I said, it's just, it f will forever be a strange occurrence, coincidence that we all started kind of playing this. And it's, you know, credit to our son for that because he's the one that got crazy about this. And, uh, but for the strangest reason, we should mention the glitches. Oh, that's right. Yes. <laughs> It was an incredibly glitchy game. That's right. <laughs> Which drove like you and I crazy because it made the achievements more difficult to get. But he loved the glitching the game out. <laughs> well, I mean, the funny thing, there's like a glitch world that you get majority of the achievements in, right. which is which is funny. It's almost like the devs knew that, hey, this is a buggy. It's like kind of like a goat simulator in a sense. They uh, make fun of themselves. But yeah. I mean, it, it has a... a 
interesting premise though for a game you know you're just uh if i remember like you're a kid right trying to get into the house looking yeah. for other kids i think so but um, i mean aren't you this guy which he doesn't look like much yes of that, a... that's right yeah you are that guy that's the that's the main uh, this guy yep. looks like he's in his 30s i don't know he looks yeah, like a kid he might but... be i i mean i will tell but you they... i didn't play it for the story but like that's <laughs> i guess that's why we got the books so we can read about the story yeah. <laughs> uh the the made-up story about the neighbor um <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, there's not a whole lot of dialogue. Right? It's no. just him going, <gasps> yeah. you know, and which we kept saying every time we walked into a room, we're like, <gasps> <gasps> yeah. you know. So, but, I mean, I, I think the characters are cool, though. You know, they're pretty mm -hmm. funny. Um, but, yeah, no, it's, it's a stealth game, right? You're trying to get into the house and find out what's going on in the house. And, you know, it, it by, I think it's like chapter three, this house turns into this crazy thing, yeah, right? Yeah, it just keeps on growing and growing in <laughs> yeah. size. And I remember I was going for the achievements. I don't think I actually completed this one because I gave up after our son did something to the garbage lid where it makes him jump up in the air uh, really high. And then I think that did something to the items in my inventory. So then I lost the magnet thing and a bunch of other items they were floating in midair in between like different parts of the house yeah and you could see them but you couldn't grab them and it drove me insane well i wish we could have that clip still and we would totally show that but i don't know if we found it again but yeah know, it totally broke the it. game yeah <laughs> which uh yeah and then he would always have the umbrella right because yeah. you could float around <laughs> with it like you know mary poppins over here yeah. and so you could float around with that and you could glitch the game there were i'm sure he watched youtube videos and how to glitch Probably. the game and how to jump like stack boxes and yes. glitch yeah it was something so, but, with boxes but, and garbage lid but i was gonna umbrellas. tell you here too like i don't think anyone went for achievements purposely in this oh like God. i needed a guide to complete this game i had no idea how I to complete the music this game. box part was so confusing and like yep. the water globe and stuff there's I, a train that goes around the house and into oh the God. house and yeah no it was it I, I don't know this was like the worst easter egg from call of duty <laughs> like it just it wasn't like something that was so obvious what you needed to do so no i the only way I could complete this was to use a guide. I had no oh. idea other than, you know, again, trying to sneak in. Because if you were caught by the neighbor, I think he took like an item away from you, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, so we have the best memories of that game. I'm not going to, yeah, say it's the best, bestest of all the games and quality of game controls and uh, non glitchiness and achievements, but. But it's the memories. Like, it's and we memories. played this mm -hmm. literally. I looked back at our history, and that's what I love about achievements because I can go back and look mm -hmm. when we had timestamps, and we played this at Halloween. Of course, you we know, did. yeah. I mean, that's that. That's why we remember it so much. Yep, exactly. I mean, so Nick's up in the series. Oh, I did not like this one very yeah, much. Yeah, you, you, I think started this, <laughs> or, or you tested this out before I played it. Yeah, but and... I, I eventually. Uh, a couple of Halloweens ago, again, where I was on a good run of uh, Halloween-type games. Um, then I uh, I played this one, and I played it all the way through and completed it. So it's very different. This is, yeah, Hello Nightmare. Uh, Hello Nightmare. What am I, Australian Hello now? Hello Nightmares. <laughs> Hello Nightmares. Um, <laughs> Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek. So this yeah. is, like, as you can see on the front cover, you have the kids. Mm -hmm. So his two kids are in this one. So you play as... Uh, I think you alternate playing. I think you actually play as the girl, if mm -hmm. I remember now. And then the uh, brother is the one that's kind of trying to catch you. Oh, that's so right. So you're trying yeah. to get various items in each level and put them into like a bin or oh a God. truck or something. Yeah. And he says in this crazy tiger costume or something y like that. That's like in the, the flame first level. fire level or something oh, like that. Yeah. It so, drove me crazy. So that's the whole premise of that one. They're just playing hide and seek and mm -hmm. you know, what kids do, right? So yeah. yeah, you play as the girl, I think. And um, and he's trying to catch you in anything you're doing and he's very annoying. And um, But it's a different take on it. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect of this one, but... You know, certainly, like you said, like this is by no means like you know award-winning games here, mm -hmm. but they're they're fascinating. They're very interesting to play, and once again, had to use a guide for this too for the achievements because again, like there's no indicator of what you need to do, and and even if this one is a little bit easier to understand, you need to get certain items. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's still like uh, physics puzzles. You have to jump on a trampoline, get into a building, and oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. so. I mean, I admire you for going for all the achievements in this series because these are not easy games to 
do achievements for. I, I have like, you know, spoiler alert, I have 100% um, completion <laughs> yeah, in all of these games, except for like the... Uh, Hello Engineer? Hello Engineer, yeah. Oh, but, yes. <laughs> but we did Secret Neighbor, I guess before we go on to the next oh, yeah. one, mm -hmm. you and I played Secret yes, Neighbor, <laughs> which is the multiplayer <laughs> version of this, which could not stand that game so yes. like I, we, there's no physical for it so we thankfully don't even have to bring it up but uh, <laughs> we played multiplayer and it was it was on game pass i think yeah. we were trying to like complete it before it left game I think pass so that's what we were was, trying to do which and again it's random you don't know who's the neighbor you're playing as these different kids that have different abilities yeah. and uh, have to you're not even working together in that game but yeah sort of oh, I mean yeah, but because you could be betrayed anyone by, yeah, yeah anyone, anyone could yeah. be the neighbor yeah that game was tricky and it was all online and the servers weren't always nice to no, us no they were not and and you know <laughs> rage quitters right too so yeah we're we're not huge fans of online multiplayer games yeah. I mean it's very rare that we play it but due to game the pass series. and the series mm -hmm. and but whatever happens we never recommend rushing to complete a game no. pass game before it leaves because i stopped doing it a while ago um it's just it's too stressful it just play your games and just enjoy, enjoy. right yeah exactly. but that one was not uh, not a great game no nope, um, not our favorite nope. but uh tell me about hello neighbor 2 i mean this one is a little bit different. Uh, they did improve on this one. I will say the controls are way better, and they even say that at the beginning of the game. <laughs> they say, like, hey, we've changed the... I, I can't remember the wording, but it's like, we've changed the awkward controls or something. Oh, my gosh, they're honest so about it. So these That's are funny. more of what you would expect, not not like the first one where you pick up items with right bumper and you do all these weird things. Uh, this one, like, you pick up items with X, you know, and you okay. open things with A, and, you know, so it's more normal controls. And, you know, better graphics, again, you know, this is an Xbox Series X game. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think this one was good. I think feel like it was a little bit shorter, and they were trying to make it a little bit more mainstream, but not a very memorable game to me. Like, I, I played it, took a couple of hours, and then, yeah. But, I mean, I still think it was good. Yeah, mechanically, you know, or the game mechanics were much better than the other games, and um, I'm glad they made improvements. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they actually make more Hello Neighbor games. I have no idea, but again, it's uh, what oh. you would expect at this point of uh, of Hello Neighbor, and but um, but it was it was decent. Yeah, and I think they had um, a special edition just for Switch that we picked up too. Mm -hmm. And we finally have some uh, Switch representation in this video too. <laughs> I mean, this one's cool though. Like this one, this was a gift that I got you. Yeah, I think. exactly. Because I, well, as you can probably see from this video, I love collectibles. I love collector's <laughs> edition, and I love not just steel books, but like little things like this mm -hmm. that you get for a game. I just think it's cool. I don't know. Maybe one of those things where, when I was a kid, I always wanted to have neat things for my games that I was playing, but not until more recently did developers publishers really start making things such as collectors collector's edition which is probably why for instance the earthbound uh whole edition game is so rare because it was one of those games that came with uh the strategy guide and some stickers and you got the game and that was just not something you found back when I was a kid. So yeah. now when I see collector's edition, I always get like, oh my gosh, even if I don't even love the game, I still want it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's for a lot of people, but it's good that it's smaller size yeah. because I think that's what they opted for too. When I started collecting collector's editions, I think around like 2014, 15, they were huge. That's right? true. It was like these yeah. huge Gears of War and Battlefield. Who's got room for this? <laughs> exactly. And that's, you know, uh, that's that's a recent poll that we did in our community <laughs> post was like asking people about collector's editions. But, yeah. Um, but the, uh, yeah, it's good to see that some of them are smaller size and especially yep. for Switch, it makes sense. Yeah, and, no, um, it does. I see this a little bit more and more and I think it's a fun way to just put a little bit extra into the game. So. Yeah. But as you can see, we loaded up on Hello Neighbor collectibles and yeah. games. So we're, you might think that we're huge fans. And I think <laughs> we're just fans of the idea of Hello Neighbor. I don't think we love the games, but I think they did a great job with the collectibles too. So we just, we bit, we did it. However, I would say if somebody hasn't played these games at all yet, 
Definitely, I would still say give it a try. I they're mean, fun they're to mess around games. with. Yeah, yeah. If, if you have a kid or mm -hmm, they have friends sure. over, this is like the perfect mess around game. Well, where do we go next? How about some trick or treat? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. But surprisingly decent movie to watch on Halloween. But we're not doing Funkos for this. <laughs> So we're still doing game? We are still doing game. This is a gaming channel. Okay, cool. Ah, phew. Okay, I'm, I'm ready now. <laughs> okay, next we're going to a series, once again, that it's one of, it's one of those funny ones, not funny haha, -ha, but, you know, it's not a comedy, but <laughs> I play them and you watch them. Yep, sure did. And then the first one we actually did in co-op, and that is Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medane. I don't know why I need a southern accent for Medane, but Maybe it, it just, just sounds... feels like it needs it. Yeah, I think it's just one of those things. Um, so yeah, this was the first one. Yeah. And it's become a tradition now that we play a Dark Pictures game every Halloween starting... I would say it was like in 2022. Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, we so, started with this one, right? The first one. Yep. Man mm -hmm. of Medan. Um, So we played that. I played it first and mm -hmm. you watched and mm -hmm. then... I was like, dear wife, I need some help with achievements. Let's mm -hmm. play uh, co-op. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, they're interested. It's like a movie, right? Yeah, it's, it's it become, is like a movie. It's become one of those things where you play it and when you go for 100% completion in those types of games, you get to see all the endings. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're just casually playing it and just do it once, and maybe twice, maybe you do like the movie mode i can't remember what the um, yeah there was a movie mode i don't remember exactly what that you, was you though. basically just watch it as a movie right okay. so you, it kind of mm -hmm. plays out and decides for you in a oh, sense okay but, oh yeah a little bit but, more random. but we okay. did the actual co-op mm -hmm. stuff because you needed different collectibles and different kind of things that went on uh, different characters but uh no I, I mean i think this was good i would say this is like a probably a seven out of ten Mm -hmm. game i would say so i it's, had fun playing that one with you yeah. it was definitely it's a different type of game than i w would usually play and i think it helped that i watched you play it first because there were certain scenes that we had to do in a very specific way or uh you know to get that collectible that yeah. you know that you needed so i mean you, you still you still had to not die obviously yeah. you still mm -hmm. had to do the button prompts because this yep. is obviously for people who played um until dawn and then later on the quarry you know, it's the same type of game where lots of cutscenes, lots yeah. of talking, unskippable cutscenes. So, yeah. yeah, if you play this for 100% completion, you're going to have to sit through a lot of the same dialogue. and you Memorize that dialogue. Yes, exactly. So it's and QTEs, right? QTEs, yeah. But it's mm -hmm. imprinted on you after you're done with this game. So, but, you know, it's just I have a lot of friends that play these games, too. And they kind of try to pace it out, you know, space out the playthroughs a little bit. So, but... I go like full hardcore when yeah, I complete it in like, you know, two days or whatever it is. But mm -hmm. it's possible they're shorter games, you know, like some uh, and like something like Until Dawn. Yeah. Because this is maybe a four hour playthrough if you play it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's um, become a tradition. Like I said, on Halloween, we play this. So that was our first one. Yeah. And then last year we played Little Hope, which I think was very good, actually, because this I was enjoyed this one. Yeah. And also, I think, isn't it set in Salem? Yeah, Salem, Massachusetts. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's the witch trials. Yeah, and, so um, I thought that was really cool. And I should have said that, too. Like, we jumped to this one. But, yeah, the first one, the Medan was uh, was a boat. The That's USS right. Medan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was took, like, a ghost, sort of like a ghost ship, but it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, loosely based on a true story, so. Yeah. But anyway, let's jump back to a little hope. Sorry about that. No, you know, it's good. And so, yeah, Little Hope is set in Salem, Massachusetts. It's uh, kind of jumps the timelines, right? So you're seeing a little bit of present day and then you're getting a little bit of a uh, history. Also, it's a little, what do you call it, mock history on a town that doesn't exist. But mm -hmm. still, you know, drawing a lot of true inspiration from history. Yeah, so yeah, it's very for cool. sure. And, uh, and we have a collectible. I mean, that you can tell the story about this oh collectible because God. it was... Uh, that's uh, the uh, voodoo doll, basically, from the game, uh, yeah. from Little Hope. I, okay, so I think it was a matter of if you pre-ordered this game through Bandai Namco, then you got this little voodoo doll. And uh, I did, 
And for some reason, they shipped the doll separately from the game and the doll got delivered to someone else's house. I don't know what happened. And so I contacted them and they were like, oh, do you know, do you go around your entire neighborhood looking for the doll, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yes, did all that. And then they're like, well, too bad. We're out of dolls. We don't have any dolls. And I was like, (laughs) we're out of dolls. (laughs) We sent them to all the wrong houses in wherever you live. Yeah. And I was just like, no, I don't know what I said. I wasn't mean, of course. And that's not me. But I was just like, no, I really needed this. It was a gift for my husband. I really wanted to get the voodoo doll. And then I got somebody, it was like a different person every time, who said, hold on, let me go check and see if we have any more like in the back. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's their personal stash. Probably they have like voodoo dolls just in their office. Yeah. Right. And then he was like, I've got one. I'll send it to you. But I was still so nervous about that. I was like, are we going to get it? Is it going to get shipped to the right house? I mean, mm-hmm. And so, and then the funny thing is, it just came in this little plastic package. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little plastic bag. Yeah, I, I remember that. Because like, cause like I said earlier with uh, Little Nightmares, Bandai Namco did not care about collector's editions over yeah. here. They're just like, hey, let's just give them a plastic mm-hmm. bag with this thing. And yeah, I bet it came in like a full box probably. Yeah. Like <laughs> I've, I've seen videos and pictures of the European one. And yeah, they got like proper boxes and <laughs> stuff. Yeah, so we, we just, just got, got like an upgrade from a Ziploc bag mm-hmm. with a little voodoo doll. <laughs> they might as well have just given some old raggedy teddy bear and said like this is from little hope you know <laughs> haven't you played it yeah yeah but i was like but still it's one of those like little things that were like yes we have the voodoo doll yeah i mean it's pretty cool we always pull this out uh decorate yeah. on halloween yeah. it's our halloween decoration it, now it's become a special <laughs> uh special kind of collectible yeah so but I, I think the the game was really good though i yeah. would probably give this I don't know why I suddenly started rating, but it seemed appropriate for <laughs> this for one. Maybe for this series, it makes sense. Yeah, you so know? I would give this like an 8 out of 10. I think it's slightly better than the first one. Yeah, and, I um, mean, I thought it was a lot of fun and just to watch even, you know? Yeah, I mean, so. again, same thing there, like playing through it multiple times just to get the different endings, achievements, that kind of thing. But, you know, you get so used to the story and, mm-hmm. yeah, th- you know, it's almost like you play through these too many times in a sense too that is a thing where the story kind of you're like okay yeah maybe it wasn't as good but like i think (laughs) it it still was very good though i think if you that's always what i think about the dark picture game is if you really did just play it once yeah you would have a really great time it would be super fun even the quarry as well but you Uh, don't get to see all the endings though that's true i know so actually i think there was a way to kind of (laughs) like yeah but i just think i i think you should play through it more than once i don't because you're you're paying money for this right yeah, like so yeah. you know if you mm-hmm. play it once for four hours it's not a lot of value that's a like good if point. you play it like two three times five or six might be too much you yeah. know I, I get that but i think, I think two it's, times uh, i can see two three sure but i think the achievement level that you, you have to play this game gets a little well that's that might just be me the way i do it yeah, so yeah <laughs> i think people probably pace it out a little bit more so yeah but no i I think that they're great you know both of those are great games yep i mean so what's up next i guess this year like we're playing house of ashes yeah so we obviously haven't played it i i did like a little bit of the intro for this i don't know if you can even call it the prologue or whatever but um so this is installed ready to go i'm um, looking forward to it yeah i i don't know i i don't know anything about this it's a little bit confusing but Because some people have said that um, this is one of the better ones, and other people have said this is the worst one. So oh. I'm not quite okay. sure what to. So I'll, we'll have to play it. You okay. Know? So people are divided on it, and we get to make up our yeah. own mind. I, I'm again. I'm not fully mm-hmm. in the know on what's going on. I think you're in the catacomb somewhere. I don't know where. If you're in ancient Egypt or in in. Um, what is it the uh, mesopotamia or you know just uh, so okay. I, I i don't know the full story yet but um you know again you have uh most likely u.s soldiers that i've seen at least mm-hmm. in the trailer but yeah i'm not gonna go out on a limb here and say that hey this is a story for this so but no well i'm excited looking- that's what we're playing it this year yeah so i guess then we already have our game lined up for the following year as well yeah <laughs> That's 2025 Halloween. 20, we yeah, we're already announcing it now. So hopefully <laughs> in a year we can make another video talking about the devil and me. <laughs> right. But this one, this one I do know the story of. It's like the uh, America's first serial killer, H. H. Uh, Holmes. So it's oh, like okay. the murder house, uh, but not like American Horror Story. I don't know if you watched some of those seasons with me, but yeah. it's uh, I think he was portrayed in that. 
But this one, um, yeah, looking forward to it. But again, heard that people weren't that impressed with it. But, you know, again, okay. who cares what yeah. everyone says, right? Like, I want to experience it myself. So. Yeah. Well, I think probably our crown jewel of this series is a very special steel book. This one's amazing. Probably one of my favorites. And the spine is very dark, so you probably won't be able But it says the Dark Pictures Anthology. And this one came with the uh, infamous uh, voodoo doll that we talked about earlier. That's the curator on the back there. That's pretty cool. Which was funny because, yeah, it's the second game and we got this steel book. Mm -hmm. Which is, again, has room for four discs in there, which is yeah. awesome. So we have all four discs in this steel book. That's, um, that's uh, really nice. And uh, yeah, no, this was, wasn't this the same kind of story the, yes. with the uh, I don't know doll? What, I don't know what <laughs> was the deal. I mean, maybe you're right now that you're reminding me about this. Um, it was probably a thing where they literally shipped the doll separate, the steelbook separate, yep. and the game separate. And I think the steelbook, they didn't even like ship or something like that. So I was like, we didn't get the doll. We didn't get the steelbook. And my tracking number was showing the steelbook never even shipped at all. But we got the game separately. Yeah, we so got we, the game. We had the game. We had little hope. Yes, so we got right. to play that. So but. that's why, oh, you just remind me, that's why I was so desperate to get not just the voodoo doll. It was the steelbook. It mm -hmm. was the steelbook that I was so desperate to get. And I'm, but I was telling them like, look, we didn't get either of these extra items. What happened? I think they probably thought I was messing with them or trying to get extras but then they also saw that um the steelbook really never shipped like it just never shipped yeah so i'm super happy that i worked as hard as i did <laughs> you worked part-time job just to get this collector's edition in <laughs> our house this. yeah and i i don't think i've seen this like no. in stores or nah, I, I don't know it's surprising with steelbooks because we love steelbooks and mm -hmm. i don't know where people are at with uh with collecting for those but we we still, especially for this generation, yeah. the Xbox One mm -hmm. uh, was fantastic for steelbooks. Yeah, and uh, that one is one of the most likely one of the rarer ones because, yeah. yes, they did release other collector's edition for, you know, mm -hmm. House of Ashes, Devil yeah. and Me. Mm -hmm. But they, that was the steelbook to fit all four discs. So yeah. if you didn't get that with little hope, mm -hmm. then then you would yeah and i remember the cool part too aftermarket when we got that was we were like oh it's not just going to be three games it's going to be four games mm -hmm. you know like it was almost like this little um sneak peek in a sense you yeah. know because i don't know that we i didn't know that there was going to be four i just thought it was like going to be three at the well time, we didn't know so. the title at least yeah but yeah. uh it was one of those things yeah. yeah so that's super cool and definitely this is one of my favorite yeah steel book good job good job have. getting it uh into our collection and uh, <laughs> Thankfully, not as many. I know there's a lot of collector's editions for mm -hmm. uh, not Man of Medan. I don't think it had anything, actually. Yeah. But then they decided, hey, these games are popular. Let's uh, add some more stuff. So Yeah, House of Ashes again. had a cool one in Europe, and I did try to look into pre-ordering it. Um, they got, like, a statue, but no, couldn't do that. Yep. Devil and Me had a weird one that had some weird mask thing that I was just like, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Which I should say, we, we love Bandai Namco collectibles yeah. and games and stuff, but they were not very uh, friendly to us in uh, in the U.S. with this series. So yeah. we uh, that's why it's a little bit bare, but we love what we have, and yep. it's, a, it's a great and collection. These are great games that we look forward to playing every year. So what the heck happened here? I mean, there was no way that we could <laughs> do all these toys and then talk about the games, too, in, in a timely manner. <laughs> This is a lot of toys. We went a little crazy on the bendy toys. I mean, there's no doubt. And then we even have the ink machine there, which uh, <laughs> came with some ink. Yeah. And sure now did. you, I don't know what you can use it for now. Like put some nacho cheese in there and then grind it out <laughs> and get some chips and some cheese. That sounds like a great plan for Halloween. Mm-hmm. It's but definitely. just to wash it off of the, yeah, wash the ink off of it first, I guess. But yeah, there you have it. That's like we went um, pretty crazy. Like, I don't know, four or five years ago with all these toys, very popular Funkos, Fat Mojo. I think it was GameStop had a ton of these. And that's what we said. If you saw our intro, we mm -hmm. went through our collection of boxes and stuff and we found a ton of these again. And you want to know something crazy? I think we're actually missing some figures. We have the tiny sure. ones, the tiny uh, Funko <laughs> ones, yeah. yeah the um, tiny little mystery. Yeah, mystery. Oh, wait, no, actually, they were Fat Mojo as well, I think, the oh, mystery boxes. Oh, and they boxes. came in that little soup can? The soup can, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I can't so, yeah. believe that we have even more than this, but... Yeah, oh, but there's, like, the black and white kind of... Uh, 
mm-hmm. series in a sense, and then you have the golden ones, the gold and the black, and uh, yeah, this is <laughs> this isn't even all of them. This is so many. <laughs> But anyway, so we anyway. Uh, we have a ton of this, and let's show some of the other stuff we have too, I guess. Yeah, so, I mean, first up will be... Yep, Bendy and the Ink Machine for Xbox One. Yeah. This was the first one we played, and um, yeah, sure, you can show all the angles of this <laughs> one. But, I mean, this was a GameStop release, right? It was published yeah. by GameStop. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the funny thing is, like, you you actually played it before me on this console. Yep. I played it on the Switch, and, and it's funny that this one actually has the little only at GameStop sticker on it, whereas this one uh, doesn't have that. Yep. So, yeah, interesting. So, yep, I played it on the Switch first. So do we need it on the PS4 then? Is the, do we kind of have oh to get gosh. that? <laughs> Maybe we do. <laughs> I mean, it's not it's not an expensive game. It's still no. mm-hmm. 15 to $20, right? So, I mean, honestly, then if we see it and it's cheap, then I think we should pick it up for the PS4. Yeah, well. clearly we're big fans. and uh, yeah. <laughs> But it's just it's one of those games, right? Like similar to Cuphead, I would say, mm-hmm. where yeah, you know Cuphead is a good game uh, mm-hmm. without a doubt. But it has so many toys and, yep. and it was that whole Funko craze and yep. mm-hmm. all these other companies companies were trying to make you know capitalize on that the license for it so and this was definitely one of those uh, games where they probably made more money on the toys than the actual games exactly i mean but i will say that i i, I did enjoy this game you know mm-hmm. for sure i mean i thought it was a i, I mean it was just it's again a unique kind of horror experience and i mean when we saw the trailer for this game like before it had come out Mm -hmm. and stuff i mean yeah you uh i couldn't wait for it i thought it was gonna i knew it was gonna be a great game yeah again it was one of those um very much highlighted at pax as Mm -hmm. we mentioned earlier too with um costume quest right yeah different year of course but this was heavily um heavily demoed and and shown off so yeah yeah, and I thought, uh, you know, although it was scary for me, um, I did play through it from start to mm-hmm. finish and had a good time with it, but I did miss some achievements. With the use of uh, the actual handbook, employee handbook, which is also pretty cool. We we have some strategy guides and stuff, right? But we don't have, I mean, it's really cool cool little strategy guide here or they call the employee handbook and it gives you hints it gives you the answers to you know basically <laughs> guides you through the game yeah you're right I but i think you that. used this for like the second playthrough maybe but yeah it does have a very unfortunate chapter select where it doesn't save your progress yeah, so tough. either you have to like get all the achievements on your first playthrough first try i think um or you have to do chapter select which if you don't get it, then you have to start all the way over from the chapter, or the beginning of it. So it's a little bit like I've said, you know, we covered this in our uh, Nintendo Switch video. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a little bit buggy when it comes to that. So, yeah. but you know, when, that's um, why I'm missing the soup can achievement because I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't bring myself to play those chapters over and over again and yeah. trying to find all the soup cans. Uh, it was just, but I, and I, I didn't want it to ruin the game for me because I really loved the game and I mm-hmm. thought it was a lot of fun. I like the story of it. I love the art style of it. And overall, I thought it was, yeah, a good experience. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it is probably um, a little bit misleading, you know, when it comes to the achievements and the completion. This is a very difficult one, actually, that mm-hmm. I'm very proud to have completed this 100%. Yeah. But as you know, it was painful. Like, yeah, this, this exactly. was a. But I did enjoy the game, like, for mm-hmm. a playthrough. Yeah. But then when you go for the rest of it, when you have no saves, no checkpoints, like playing an old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> An old Nintendo game here, like no checkpoints and oh, stuff. And I remember the Tommy gun as well. That's right. Yeah. So, so there's some Easter eggs. There's some buggy mm-hmm. stuff you have to do. But again, uh, you know, you can appreciate what they were trying to do here, right? Yeah. They were trying to make this horror experience with these, again, Mickey Mouse uh, type characters, right? But unfortunately, uh, there was actually no physical made for the sequel. Which is kind of a shame because I think that game is highly underrated. I think it was... You know, people received it pretty well on PC, but it's kind of seemed to go fly under the radar on yeah. console. It's just mm-hmm. I and I, as you know, I bought that day one because I, I really enjoyed this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I bought Bendy and the Dark Revival, 
and had waited for, as you can probably see some of the toys uh, that we have here. We bought from GameStop, like, I don't know, two years. Um, yeah, that was funny. Two years before the game came out. I was like, oh, so they're selling the, the figures for this, but yeah. there's no game. And I remember I was, it was highly anticipated. You know, I was just waiting for it to be uh, announced. And then it came out on Steam. And I was like, okay, that's cool. You yeah, know, I'm, okay. I'm sure it'll it'll transfer over to or uh, be ported Console? over to consoles. Mm -hmm. But then it just didn't seem to happen. And I yeah, think it was weird. like six to eight months after. And then it uh, was released on console, but digital only, like you uh, like you said. Yeah, and so, they kept announcing it. And I remember it was just like a year after year after year of them yeah. saying this game's going to come out. And it, I, yeah, and then it was almost forgotten, I feel, by the time maybe it did kind of come. But again, out. it was like it was already similar to Cuphead, right? And mm -hmm. I bring that up a lot. These mm -hmm. two games have a lot of similarities in terms mm -hmm. of how much they were delayed. And mm -hmm. then COVID happened and it was delayed even more. Mm -hmm. um so but this was one of those that yeah came out i, I think it, it's a really really good game it's yeah. not just a really good horror game because they improved on everything every aspect of this game the gameplay the story the character models the graphics everything was so upgraded so yeah very very impressed with this game and i think i almost gave it like top rank like top uh top rating on this one so and i i highly recommend checking that out it is still finally now going on sale uh, digitally but um unfortunately we'll just have to hope someone will pick this up maybe limited run someone will yeah that would be great do a physical release because I, I will i will definitely pre-order pre that one because um it's it deserves to be in our collection i think after all of these toys and uh, how <laughs> highly we speak of this uh game and mm -hmm. uh but yeah dark revival is really good and it was actually better than what i anticipated uh, by the time it came out it's as you know when you wait years and years for a yeah. game to come out and you're like oh it wasn't worth the wait and all that stuff but that one definitely was and uh, i still have my hard playthrough to do mm -hmm. and some of the collectibles that i missed but that no issues whatsoever and they even had supernatural abilities that they uh, introduced in that game some improved stealth and yeah so and you can do upgrades um a little bit differently than you did in the first one. I can't even remember if you had upgrades on your pipe there, but you can yeah. do so much more in the second one now. So, that's but awesome. As I, as I remember, yeah, Steam gave it glowing reviews, but seems to have just kind of gone unnoticed on console. Yeah, so that's really unfortunate because it does. It looked like a great game when I would watch you uh, play it. So. Yeah, and then we got those toys, you know, mm -hmm. years before the game came out, and I haven't seen them anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they don't sell them like, like GameStop sold out. I like to think that we were like um, supporting the game in progress by buying the toys mm -hmm. early. If people saw the opportunity to uh, get the licensing for these things, I mean, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff. But we have a lot. But we can't through. we against can't forget the games. You know, we nope. do enjoy them and we play them mm -hmm. and have played them the last few Halloweens as well. Again, one final look at our entire you know Bendy collection, Bendy family here, yeah. <laughs> Bendy family. <laughs> Well, thanks for joining us for our Halloween special. It's been real, guys. But if you'll excuse us, we're going to go downsize our collection now. No, no, don't do that. Just put it back in the boxes. Okay, fine. Works for me. All right, we'll see you guys next time. And happy Halloween.